Hello, Core 3 Beauties. This is Marcos, and this is our Week 7 to Week 8 Recap Briefing video. And I'm just going to kind of go through basically what we went through in our last class on Thursday. A few of you missed it, so those of you should for sure pay attention. Um, but mostly I just wanted to recap and remind everyone about what's due. Uh, we have our digital project, Project 2, being wrapped up while at the same time we're starting our final project, Project 3, and uh, kind of a little bit of a lot of moving parts, and I just want to make sure everybody's clear on what's to be done and when it's to be done by. And to start off, I just want to um, remind us of what we talked about yesterday with our final project and the idea of creating, um, build, well, maybe building on what we learned in the first uh half of the class so far and how we've gone through this exploration of a print piece, developing that, and even before that, going through the exploration of looking at uh, the idea of beauty and the idea of how the realities of the universe and the realities of our world uh, reflect our perception of what's good and what's true. And for each of you, I challenge you to go out into the city on the first week of class and begin to ask yourself, what is the universe asking you? Or what are you being told? Or what are you being guided towards? And all of you responded so great in terms of recording imagery, researching imagery, uh, writing down thoughts, ideas, and developing concepts that were to be the foundation of your project. And to respond from there by building print pieces that um, emphasized or communicated or expressed the ideas you're interested in, in the form of a, of a analog print piece. And then from there, um, as we are now finishing, taking that same idea, that's the same learnings, the same messaging from your print piece and turning them into a digital uh, interactive dynamic piece that will express similar ideas and having kind of two pieces that uh, unifyly, unifyly, that a word, that together um, express the same concept, express the same message um, and talk uh, in a similar way, but in different mediums. So with that being the experience we had, now we're trying to maximize those learnings into creating more of a purposeful version of that. Um, not that your version wasn't purposeful, but what I mean by that is by creating uh, more of a broader intent. And to do that, I'm calling this project Design for Good, and meaning that I want us to explore different human individual needs, different social issues, and zero in on one that has the potential to be affected by design, to be affected by the way you think and see the problem, and to have... Um, an outcome that will be a brand that addresses that issue that speaks to a specific audience, whether it's to create awareness or to speak to the audience who's um, suffering or is challenged by your issue and to provide a solution, whether it's through raising awareness, raising money, or whether it's through literally solving the problem by creating tools, design tools, and to have that brand have these, um, smaller touch points that represent the brand and show it as a living being, but also having two primary touch points that are in the form of an analog piece and a digital piece that work together. Um, so the challenge is to have you each go through that process together as a class and with me to be able to um, complete that in, a, in an inspired way. And um, we went over kind of the the foundations that the, all the cohort all the cohorts have in this class in terms of deliverable deliverables and seeing those two main pieces giving you choices about um, what kind of components you can choose to build on um, you know on the uh, idea of a, building it around a visual identity and having an analog medium that has an editorial component potentially, or a spatial component. Um, and then um, having a digital medium 
as a secondary um, element, a main element that is based on either motion or interactivity through a website or an app uh, or a dynamic poster. Um, all that left to you or us to figure out as we figure out the best way to communicate what you're trying to do with your with your brand. And I'll let everybody know that the idea was kind of to um, build that idea around a kind of a a bigger a bigger drive or a bigger uh, goal. And and that's what I meant by more purposeful. And um, our overall arching attempt here is to again, make connections to beauty and connections to what we're trying to say in a good, true uh, way. And to do that by identifying a social cause, identifying a specific individual need and using a brand, uh, building the elements of the brand that will lead us to human flourishing and to a solution that's going to have positive change. And I expressed in class, and I'm going to say it again, that I'm really wanting for us when looking at these social causes, because I know when you think of social causes, you can think of a lot of charged up causes that are important and uh, highly relevant. But what I want to do with the way we look at this in terms of, again, there, there she is at the top, beauty watching over us. Like I want to make sure that we're looking at it from that perspective and that we're finding ways that we can create uh take the things that aren't so beautiful and solve them into, into or provide solutions that will then help individuals um, prosper and um, have positive change. So that means trying to find a cause that we can turn it around and make it into something um, that's going to uh, really bring an outcome that's um, uh, on the positive side and and has a uh, real tangible uh, potential results. And we shared in, in class the idea of um, taking those steps within our project as seen here in our human flourishing beauty rainbow that we're gonna come up with a new brand concept and a strategy in the very beginning as we're starting to do now. That thinking will lead to a brand name and that will then be converted into uh, within our strategy, we'll develop a brand logo that reflects what we're trying to do, and it speaks to the audience we've each of you have identified. And those that brand logo will be put into a design system with brand standards, and then we'll create just some base touch points to show uh, the potential of the brand and how your your design of your uh, identity can express itself and live in the world. And then once we're done with that, that's sort of like part one of three, and then part two and three are here at the descending arch of our beauty, human flourishing rainbow, which is um, to create number one is a main analog print experimental touch point, experiential touch point, sorry, or uh, the main two touch point is a digital motion interaction touch point. So like we saw yesterday in our example, a book and an app that work together to solve adult uh, illiteracy and, um, and a brand that has um, a clear set of values, a clear target audience, a clear mission, and is designed with um, identity that reflects that back and then can be applied towards how you design your two main pieces with some base touch points, some minor touch points, maybe is another way of putting them that help tell the whole story of that brand. So <clears throat> to do that, uh, we want to do this within the context of the amount of time we have because design is a like a like a sporting event it's based on uh, a clock and there's actually two clocks in design one clock is the clock of time which is these nine weeks we have uh, or maybe ten um, that allow us certain amounts of um, phases and steps to get this done and the other clock is one we don't have to worry so much about here but the clock of of budget and money. We don't have to worry about that at all, um, unless you play this video or any other video with me in it at a fast speed, then it will cost you a chocolate bar and I will gain a chocolate bar. So I'd say if you're doing that now and you've been doing that through the whole video, if you stop doing it right now and play it at a normal speed, I will allow you to not have to pay the price. But if you continue, I will see a chocolate bar in our next class.
being handed to me. Okay, so back to this. So we're gonna look at starting uh, selecting a cause. Uh, it's our next our next assignment, literally is to select the cause. We'll go into week eight and begin. Once we establish that cause, we'll start researching and developing further what our cause is about. We'll identify an audience. We'll develop a strategy for the brand. We'll develop a name. And then we'll um, design that name into a logo. And then we'll design that logo into a set of, of minor touch points that represent the, the potential and bring to life your brand in a, in a kind of cool way. And then from there, we'll use the last uh, part of the semester to uh, focus in on how to make your print and digital design touch points, your design pieces um, become um, as hefty and as impressive as possible, finding ways to design many spreads like the foundational brief expressed, you know, like the 48 pages of a the five stories, the 48 pages of, of content for your print piece or uh, the five sections or however they outlined it, you know, basically we just want to make as hefty as possible um, your digital piece and your print piece. Um, but to do it in the context of um, seeing your design presentation, your design deck as uh, the product you're delivering and making um, prototypes, digital prototypes and um, prototypes of your book piece, your print piece and prototypes of your digital piece that work on the screen and don't require printing out. Um, but as I said in class, you can still do that if you want. And then mostly if we focus in here on what's happening between after week nine towards uh, week 10, I don't know why I call it six, week 16. Um, oh, it is week 16, it's number 10, week 16. Week 15 and week 16, we see um, some potential disaster that could happen that will uh, bring upon weeping, gnashing of teeth. And uh, the, to avoid that really is just a matter of um, trying to stay focused in on your work throughout the full half of the semester. And at some level though, if it does end up that you do get the three crying emojis even earlier on, even at every phase, that that is not, um, that's not a bad thing because suffering is what is the, sorry to break it to you, the essential ingredient to both excellence and happiness. Um, and if you want something done well, you've got to suffer. If you want to be happy, truly happy, you've got to suffer and then work through your suffering. Because after you do that, as you see at the final, after the finals, you're going to have love, partying, and stardom and that's what we're all going to get out of this project um, once we're done and my goal is for each of you after you're suffering through to then have a full realization of your potential that you'll see like wow i spent my life learning how to be creative learning how to be communicate learning how to communicate learning how to express myself learning how to have an aesthetic learning to care about the world learning to care about my community, learning to care about my family, learning to care about myself. And now I will I can see for sure, for real, in this project that I've finished, in this brand that I've birthed, that I can do a lot. And I can do a lot with the skill sets that I have right now. So that's the challenge for you to really tap into all the things you've learned from what I've taught you in this class to what your teachers have taught you in previous classes and previous years and what you've learned in high school and middle school, elementary school, what your parents, your grandparents, your family has taught you and bring it all into this project and create your finest hour on week 16. All right. That's a, that's a good challenge to have. Um, all right. So we did look at this um, example from last, from last year and I've been looking for others and I'm going to share some more later on that aren't quite as, ideal is this, but this um, project addresses the social issue of adult illiteracy in the USA, in the US, and um, targets um, grown-up adults um, that uh, were identified as people who sort of kind of had to take a sacrifice at some point in their young life and for forbade or um, didn't weren't wasn't able to focus on their education fully enough because of the responsibilities they had, or maybe the challenges that were given to them, 
and they've had to go through life not being able to fully read and understand uh, written English. And instead of seeing these as victims, we this um, student saw them as actually kind of heroes who uh, have lots of other skills, who are amazing people, but didn't get the reading and writing, or maybe it's even a second language uh, in English. And that skill worthy became sort of the concept for how to speak to those people, to let them know their value and their um, and to reflect back on them that they were able to overcome so many other things to get through life so far, uh, to sacrifice for their family, to take on responsibilities that maybe were thrown upon them, to maybe have a bad, hard time in life earlier on and then overcome that and now be in a better place. And that skill worthy brings those kinds of people, these kinds of like heroes uh, together in order to um, help them get the skills that they missed and help them overcome maybe this barrier or this fear or this um, shame or embarrassment of not being able to fully read and write, but craftily being able to get through life and provides them a method of doing that through these courses that are um, that utilize a, a booklet and a, and a technology and an app that merge them together in a way that you can learn uh, at home, but also have a community that you can meet with and to uh, kind of create that full vision of that in the some of, in the slides you see, which are just a portion of what we looked at yesterday. The video is is here on um, on this deck, and I shared everybody this deck. So those of you who didn't see it, please watch it. And those of you who did see it, watch it again. It's um, it's a good foundation for um, what you need to be doing. And like I like I mentioned yesterday, the project that the projects that have been done in the past for me in this class. We're not based on this idea of print and digital being the primary thing. And instead, we're more about kind of a 360 approach with a heaviness on the branding and with a lot of research and inspiration and strategy. And with this project, I want all those components, but to kind of dial it down maybe on the research, not dial it on the research, but not focus so much time on uh, building up the brand in such a specific way, still doing those parts, but maybe a little quicker and maybe not as many options. And then... Um, and then making the touch points be kind of focused to just a few minor touch points that show the breadth of the brand and then have the two main player touch points, the print and the digital piece becoming more focused. So that's the difference here than what you're seeing um, that what you'll be doing. Um, so I won't play this now if I can just get past it. Okay. Um, all right. So let's just quick quickly talk about, I, I'm taking too long. I just realized let's quickly talk about um the finding a cause project. So basically this first, the first step is for each of you to take time now to uh, reflect on what it is you think you might want to be um, taking on as a cause. And step one is of course, examining the things you care about currently and maybe picking one, one thing that you've sort of always had a passion for, maybe you've been involved in. Um, maybe trying to look at it a little deeper so you can find maybe a more specific way to, to get into that. And then I want to encourage each of you to like just do some research and try to find things that are very specific and different, things that are not part of your world. I want each of you as designers to learn how to step outside of yourself and to go towards something that's different than who you are and begin to try to understand something brand new, try to understand and become empathetic towards something you don't know anything about. So find causes that might not relate to you at all, um, that are important, that most importantly, I think could use design to help shine the light towards what they're trying to express or to help solve a problem that they're trying to, to, to uh, make progress on and um, pick causes that are, that are um, not your usual suspects of causes that we kind of hear about maybe a little too much um, and find things that are nuanced and different. So the goal is to make a little deck that showcases those causes and to um, be able to print that, present that to me, something that looks like this, just a simple title page, um, a, oh, I'm so sorry, a, 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 a simple title page and a set of pages that um, one per like one per cause that outlines the issue, has some imagery, but also most importantly, allows you to be able to just speak about it in a, in a general way. Um, this one has suicide mental health, uh, the Forgotten Generation of Elderly People in South Korea, 
uh, also suicide mental health in South Korea, and then food based in America. The, I'm not saying these are what you should do. That's just the ones this person picked. Um, and um, for you to do the same thing. And then the idea is that when we have on Tuesday, we're going to have midterm individual one-on-one -on -one reviews. And during that class session, I'll be either in class or on Zoom, depending on where you want to be. And then we can talk about we can talk about just how you did you're doing so far in class and give you some quick feedback, which I, you know, everyone's doing really great. So uh, I, I'll give specific nuanced feedback to each of you and then um, talk about these options and let's, we'll decide what you're going to be working on. So you have then a, a, another week to work on your research presentation. Okay. So that's simple enough. So focus on that by creating that for, um, for Tuesday. That's coming up the next class. I'll be emailing each of you. Uh, with the schedule, which should be the same schedule as before. Um, and um, I posted the assignment on Canvas and created a Google Drive, started a new project three set series that's going to start with part one. And that's where you'll you'll post your selecting a cause deck. And then um, this is a 52 point project using this set of criteria. And um, and like I said, been saying this whole time, like continue to put your best work forward, continue to be disciplined and focused and passionate about what you're doing, continue to communicate in class, not only when we're talking about your work, but when we're talking about others' work. Um, my class is generally doing pretty good with those discussions. Sometimes I got to like beg for feedback, but so let's try not to have that anymore. I want to have fights for people wanting to talk, giving feedback rather than silence. Um, so try to, uh, be proactive in, in your participation because little points will gather if, uh, every time you do that. Okay. So the workflow for week eight is going to be, uh, oh yeah, let's not forget. We got to watch the, our pesky little videos. Um, this is the second to last one on art direction. And then next time is my turn. And then, uh, we, we're going to watch that uh, video and learn, learn, learn learn about other, other topics and learn about other teachers. You can see all those teachers that you could have had, it you got stuck with me. And then uh, we're gonna, you're gonna create that deck that overviews two to three causes you're considering for your project. And then on Tuesday, we're gonna have our individual midterm reviews where you'll present your causes and we'll talk about how you're doing. And then um, on Thursday, we're gonna have our final critique for our digital project. So. That's the thing you're really kind of hustling on right now. So keep working on that. You've got a week from yesterday, you know, to get it done. And it's going to be a treat critique. So be ready for snacks. Just don't be, you won't be surprised this time. You'll, I'm going to do it like I did last time. Uh, the snacks will be there and you'll be there with your, with your uh, final projects, which are actually the treat in the critique is your projects. Uh, so we'll review those and have a great Thursday next week. And then uh, we'll continue on after that with full-blown uh, project, final project work. And um, this is a reminder that there's a, the, can, the Canvas um, assignment is the same one that we've been building on. And there's a new um, final, well, not, it's not new, it's been there for a while, actually part three um, of project two, which is where you'll put your final presentation. Okay, all right, that's it. So everybody back to work. Um, spend your weekend working hard, get that digital project finalized and solved and think about the things in the world uh, that can be improved by your intervention through your creativity, your design and your, and your passion for good. And remember to look for the beautiful. We'll see you guys later. Bye.